Hello, welcome to Big Orc Games and Boxing Video. It's the new Future Card Buddy Fight Golden Buddy Champion Box. My name is Simon. I'll be doing the unboxing today. So this is a big special box set that's come out for Future Card Buddy Fight. It's called Special Series Volume Three Golden Buddy Champion Box. So I'm going to do, uh, what I'm going to do is open it up, show you what's inside. This is not not an in-depth tactical strategy guide or anything like that on the decks or how to play them even particularly well. Uh, this is just showing you what's inside, give you some thoughts and opinions on the different decks and cards you're getting in there. But otherwise, you know, this is just an overview of what you're getting in the box. So you can see from the back, you're getting three decks in there, the full deck lists on here. You get a Dragon World deck, a Hero World deck, and a Dragon Zwei set, which I've probably pronounced wrong, I'm sorry. I never studied German. Um, so this is three pre-constructed decks. Now, even though they do say Dragon World, Hero World, and Dragon's Eye, obviously, for those of you who play Buddy Fight, I'm sure you're going to see the fact that these <laughs> those are not the only worlds that are included. So let's open it up. So you get this uh, slip on the top. So we'll take that off. Put that to one side. So we have here what's effectively is a chest. So it opens up on this side, and lifts up. Ta-da! We have three decks inside. Now, if I take decks out, which is always a fun bit, trying to get to the cards without damaging them. So that's the Dragon's Y deck, the Hero World deck, and the Dragon deck. Now, if I take these bits of white cardboard out, as you can see, these are just empty bits of white cardboard, and there's another one there. Now you can see, this turns into a big empty box. <laughs> so all of that was just packaging to keep these three decks nice and neat and pretty on the top. What this now turns into is a storage box. So as you can see, put your decks and cards in there. Now it's spaced well enough that you can put sleeved cards in here. As you can see, these are unsleeved and there's a little bit of play in there. So I'll do that here. So sleeve decks will fit in here fine. I think you could even potentially get deck boxes in here. It might be a little bit of a squeeze, but yeah, you should be able to get deck boxes in here as well. So it is a good place to store a load of your collection, actually. And it's fairly sturdy construction. It's, an, it's not terribly heavy, but it is, you know, it's firmly made, uh, firmly and well made. As long as you don't mind a uh, bow dragon being all over the front of the box. <laughs> uh, and then golden buddy champion box on the back. But yeah, no, it's a very well constructed box and it will be really useful for storing your collections of cards and decks and stuff in there. So I'm happy with the box. I mean, it's a shame that such a, it is such a big box to have uh, for something that effectively contains three decks, but hey ho. So on to the decks themselves. So. In the English release, you get one Buddy Rare in the deck, and then the rest are normal cards. I think in the Japanese you had uh, three or four Triple R's as well. Unfortunately, in this one we don't get that. So as you can see here, I'll pull the flag from the back. So this is the Dragon World deck. Um, so I'm sure you're all very familiar with that flag. So on top we have the really cool gold foiled Buddy Rare. So this is Great Sun Dragon Battle Dragon, uh, size 2, 6,000 attack, 4,000 defense. I'm making sure I got that the right way around this time. <laughs> For those of you who remember some old videos. Uh, 2 critical, cool cost is pair gauge, and when he links attacks with another Sun Dragon, which this deck is full of, look at 5 cards from the top of the deck, choose it to one monster or item from amongst it, put it into your hand, put the rest on the bottom, and if you did pull a card, discard a card. And it reminds you, you can put impact monsters into your hand too. I like the reminder text. So you can see from him, and the fact that we also get four normal copies of him, this is meant to be your buddy, and it's the focus of the deck, which is getting those items and monsters. And you're going to see this repeat throughout the deck as well. Champion of the Sun Great. You're going to see this mechanic repeated as well, which is uh, when it link attack with another Sun Dragon for this turn, the Sun Dragon you feel gets critical plus one. Pretty sweet. Uh, at the end of this, uh, at the end of the battle, this card attacks. It is equipped with an item, for the, and you're equipped with an item for this turn. It gains double attack. You can see this deck is very synergy heavy. When it links attack with another Sun Dragon, there for Mirror Drive Dragon. When this links attack with another Sun Dragon for Tail Blazer. Can you see? Can you see what's going on here? So none of them have particularly, or some of them don't have particularly high powers, as you can see, like four thousand, six thousand, three thousand. But because it's emphasizing on doing this link attack, so this one you get the extra gauge on there for doing the link attack. Um, 
With this guy, you get the additional crit. It's really focusing on this synergistic um, combo between all of the Sun Dragons in the deck. When this one links attack with another Sun Dragon, destroy an item on your opponent's field. You see? You're getting all the card effects out of doing these link attacks. Awaken, Bow Dragon. So when this enters the field, you may return up to one Sun Dragon item from your drop zone into your hand. So even if your opponent has destroyed one of your items, you can get it back. Um, Jet Dragon Jr. At the end of the battle, this link attack with another Sun Dragon. Return this card from the field to your hand. Now, that's a size zero, but with only 1,000 defense, it keeps it nice and safe in your hand. So on to the spell cards. Because the monsters are all fairly simple and straightforward. It's all just about gaining benefits for link attacking. So Bow Rescue lets you choose one of the two following. Put the top two cards of your deck into your gauge, or if you have Bow Dragon Monster on the field, return a monster from your drop zone to your hand. Very useful for recurring something that you've lost. Dragon Force Cancel. You can only cast this card if you're equipped with a card that has Dragon Force in its card name. Um, through the Fire and Storm. Uh, through the Fire and Thunder, even. Call uh, Cast Cost as a gauge, and for this turn, nullify all abilities of monsters on your opponent's field, which is such a useful card to have. Uh, Sunshine Rush, you can only cast it at 5 or less life and it allows you to call up to 1 size 2 or less Sun Dragon monster that's not an impact monster by paying its cast, uh, call cost, but you can only do this once per turn. Sun Dragon Shield, a different type of shield. So you can only cast this during an attack on your opponent's turn if you do not have a monster in the center and a, if you have a Sun Dragon card on the field, which is not a problem in this deck. So you get to null the attack, put the top card of your deck into your gauge, gain a life, and if you have two or more Sun Dragons on the field, which you should, this card cannot be nullified. It's such a good shield. Blue Dragon Shield is in here as well, which is a classic. Drago Bond, you can only cast it if you do not have a monster in the center. Choose a monster on your field, and the next time it will be destroyed, gain two life and prevent it from leaving the field. It's Little, nice little bits of life gain. So the items, which is another sort of the second strong focus of the deck. And then we have the Dragon Force Straight Punch. So it has a release condition. So you have to have six life or less, and a monster with Bow Dragon in its name on your field, which there are a few in the deck. Equip cost is to pay two gauge. Uh, it cannot be destroyed, return to hand, its ability cannot be nullified, and it can attack during your final phase. Whew. And when this card link attacks with another Sun Dragon, destroy all monsters during your opponent's field and deal damage to your opponent equal to the number of cards destroyed. Mm. So, on average, you're going to be doing a two, two additional damage with this one. With 5,000 power and two crit as well, this is such a finishing move, this item. Sun Sword Bal Sword, uh, 2,000 attack, two crit. Um, but when a Sun Dragon monster in your field links attacks, for this turn, this card gains plus 2,000 power and plus one crit. Uh, you only get this once per turn, though. So that makes it a little bit more useful. I mean, it's free to cast anyway, and you do have to have more Sun Dragon Monsters on the field, so it's not good if you are behind. But still, it's good if you can get that off. And Sun Fist Jet Knuckle. So this is 4,000 power with 2 crit, but it costs a gauge to play. And when a Sun Dragon Monster in the field link attacks, put the top card of your deck into your gauge once per turn. And counter is act, pay a gauge, and put this card from your field into a drop zone. And for this turn, the Sun Dragon only field gets crit plus one. Not an amazing ability, but there is ways to recur the item, so you can get it back at least for doing that. And it might be what you need to do the finishing punch, although in that case, you know, it's crit two anyway, so. And then, of course, what would the deck be without some impact monsters? Here we have Bow Dragon, Bow Weapon Combination. Size 2 impact monster, 10,000 attack, 5,000 defense, and 2 crit. Its core cost is 3 gauge and put the card on top of a sun dragon monster on your field. Uh, it has, when it enters the field, stand a sun dragon item on your field, and for this turn, that item can attack during your final phase. And when this card links attacks with another sun dragon item, for this turn, that item and this card gain penetrate and crit plus 1, and it has soul guard. And it's just utterly disgusting impact monster it really is going to be finishing off the game for you if you don't win after that <laughs> and you get four of those in there so yeah so the of the three decks this one is probably one of the more straightforward ones just because it's a case of play down sun dragons um perform lots of links attacks play really big powerful items smash face win very straightforward so here we have the Hero World deck. 
Right, so you have the Hero World flag at the back here. So it allows you to use Hero World and generic cards. And we'll have a look. So right from the top, we have Revolutionary Zeta. So Zeta is an impact monster at size 3, 9,000 attack, 4,000 defense, and 3 crit. Call cost is to pay 3 gauge. And if you're transformed into the card, it cannot be destroyed ret or returned to hand. And you cannot call monsters other than impact monsters. And But you may call impact monsters on any, num uh, any number of times in one turn. Uh, impact transform is to pay 2, ca uh, two gauge. Sorry, I'm there. Tongues all over the place today. Right, so it's a really nice and powerful impact monster, especially because it can't be destroyed or returned to hand. However, there is that downside of you cannot call monsters other than impact monsters. Well, that would suck, wouldn't it? Especially because you get one in the buddy rare, and you get three normal versions of him. That would suck, wouldn't it? Well, it's a good thing if I flick through here, you can see that this deck is completely and utterly filled with impact monsters. Um, the other thing you might notice, there's a lot of spells in here. And also, there's loads of different worlds. It's not just Hero World. So, the reason for this is this card down here. You get five copies of it. Now, it's a shame it wasn't the Buddy Rare uh, like the other ones, but still. So, this is Gem Clone. So, it's a zero size impact monster, zero attack, 1000 defense, and zero crit. Seems weird, doesn't it? But there's that ability. If your flag is Hero World and this card is in your Buddy Zone, you can use impact monsters even from worlds other than Hero World. Boom, the whole deck suddenly makes sense. <laughs> and it has counter act. During your final phase, you may pay one gauge. And if you do call an impact monster without gem clone in its card name from your hand without paying its call cool cost on top of this monster. Oof. So yeah, this deck focuses heavily on impact monsters. In fact, that's all that's in there, apart from the spells. And you get five copies of gem clone, so you can have that extra one in your buddy zone. So let's take a quick look at which ones we're going to get. So we have Fake Lord Riddle Phantom. Uh, pay three gauge and put a monster from your field into Soul. It has double attack Soul Guard, a lifelink two. 9,000 attack, two crit, and 8,000 defense. You're going to slide these cards sideways now, it's a bit weird. Fake Black, uh, Abigail. Another size three, 8,000 attack, 5,000 defense, two crit. Costs two gauge and destroy a monster on your field. Oof. And when an attack by this card destroys your opponent's monster, put the top three cards of your opponent's deck into their drop zone and deal three damage to your opponent. Nasty. And when it attack, when its attack is nullified, deal a damage to your opponent. I think it's my favourite one. But sadly, you only get two. Uh, Fake the Sun, Bow Dragon. So this is um, size two, 8,000 power, three crit, 3,000 defence. Call cost is two gauge and put a monster from your field into your gauge. And your equipped items get critical plus one, and it has penetrate. So just nice little helpful support there, and you get two. Fake Dragoner Jackknife is size two, 6,000 attack, 6,000 defense, and two crit. Cool cost is two gauge, and put this card on top of a monster on your field. And when it enters the field, you may put a size three monster from your drop zone into your hand. Hmm, pretty cool. Especially because some of the size threes, ah, oh, the circle. So cool. I just, ah. Oh. I just, he's great. Where is he? Where's he gone? Abigail. That's awesome. Um, and it has move and soul guard. So I have to keep flicking it that way. And you get two of those. I have to keep flicking it that way. Uh, another size two. This is from the dungeon world. Fake knight and legion. 6,000 attack, 6,000 defense, but zero crit. Cool cost is pay three gauge and put a monster from your field into a drop zone. So quite a steep cost for something with zero crit. When it enters the field, though, if you have an item equipped, destroy a monster on your opponent's field. Mm. And when it attacks for this turn, this card gets critical plus one for each different impact monster in your drop zone. Boom, boom, boom. You have a nasty crit there. I mean, for a size two, you can have a horribly powerful uh, critical there. Um, you'll need to clear the way because it's only got the 6,000 attack, but still, all that crit. Flame Demon Elytron. Uh, size 1 impact, 5,000 attack, only 1,000 defense with 1 crit. And when it enters the field, destroy a monster on your opponent's center. And at the end of your turn, destroy this card. So it really is like, f you effectively flash it in, open up the way, smash in. I mean, combine these two together. And yeah, again, I know it's only crit 1, but 
you combine them together and you're whittling away fast at your opponent's life total with that and you get three of those. And then we have Water Demon Kinoides. Probably said that right. Size 1, 5,000 power. Again, 1,000 defense and 1 crit. And when it enters the field, put a soul from a card in your opponent's field into his or her drop zone. And at the end of your turn, destroy this card. Again, it just automatically combos with this guy is play the ice, uh, the water one first, remove the soul, then play Elytron, destroy the card. Boom, boom, boom. And you've opened up the path to victory. Then we have Gem Clone Variable Bit. So size zero, zero attack, zero crit, and 1,000 defense. See a, see a running pattern with uh, Gem Clone. So it's got counter, act. During your final phase, pay two gauge to call an impact monster without Gem Clone its name from your hand without paying its core cost on top of this monster. And if this card is in the soul of an impact monster that would leave the field, you may put this card from the soul into the drop zone and the card remains on the field. Pretty neat, huh? It's like an additional level of soul guarding. And you get two of those. So you can see there's a lot of two ofs in the monsters. So this is one of the decks that you probably want to try and get a hold of some additional of the impact monsters just to help beef it up, decide which ones you like the most of, make a couple of cuts and beef those ones up. So the spells, we have Artificial Talisman, this one is Find Joker. Search your deck for up to one impact monster with Zeta or Gen Clone in its name, put it into your hand, shuffle the deck, and you can only do this once per turn, so it's just helping you chew out the cards you need, you can get four of those. Hyper Energy Classic reprint, um, however it's got this sort of dragon artwork thing, is it the fire one that we saw earlier? Um, uh, a light... Elytron? Yeah, it looks like Elytron. Elytron? Elytron? I guess I Elytron. Uh, so that one's just a nice simple gain four gauge. You can get three of those. It's about time I got Sirius. Another one. Another reprint. You can see the Elytron and his water and I don't recognize that one. His other friend. Um, you can only cast it with six or less life. Pay gauge and draw two cards. Just nice and simple draw time. So back to the artificial talismans. This one is three gauge. So you can only cast it if you have a card with Zetra or Gem Clone in its name on your field. Not, it shouldn't be too difficult. Counter, put the top three cards of your deck into your gauge, and you can only do this once per turn. So it's sort of like a hyper energy, but slightly weaker and with a condition. <laughs> Here we have Artificial Talisman 2 draw. So you can only cast it during your final phase, and if you have a Zetra or Gem Clone, you have to pay a gauge to draw two cards. Simple and straightforward. Uh, Armor Talisman Finish Road. You can only cast this card during the final phase and if you have a card with Zetra in its name, rather than just Zetra and Gem Clone. Cast cost is to put an impact monster in your field into the drop zone to call an impact monster from your drop zone by paying its call cost. Pretty cool, huh? So you can switch one of your lower level, weaker ones that you've played out, so the, let's just say, for example, the ones that destroy themselves at the end of turn. Switch out something bigger and cooler. Here we have Armor Talisman Zero Damage. You can only cast it if you have a Zeta or Gem Clone on your field. And the next time damage will be dealt to you this turn, it's reduced to zero. Probably enough to hopefully keep you alive. And you have three of those. And then we have, I've seen through your moves, another reprint, though this time with um, the water one. I can't remember his name already. Um, and once again, you can only cast it during your, an attack on your opponent's turn, and if you don't have a monster in the center, to nullify the attack. So what you might have noticed as well is the fact that obviously there's no items in there either. It's quite an interesting deck, the way it's built and stuff like that. I I do, <laughs> I like it just because it's different, which I feel is a, a bad trait just for liking it, but because it's specialised in being just this pure impact monster deck, it just makes it really interesting. So, lastly, we have Dragon's Vi. Dragon's Vi? That's in Dragon's Vi. So... Dragon's Vine comes with the Dragon's Eye flag. So this allows you to use monsters with dragon in their attribute, but your initial hand becomes four cards, your initial gauge becomes two, but your life total becomes 20. A few step backs and a few steps forward. Um, so if I remember rightly, originally this was only available as a promo, so now you've got an opportunity to get a hold of this and a deck that sort of focuses around it. Downside being is the fact that it's not a nice, pretty, secret, rare, or promo card. It does have the character artwork on there, and it's not foil. But still, it gives you access to this. 
and this allows you to build a deck that comes from all the different worlds because you can have anything with dragon in its attribute and they really do take uh, take use of this so here we have the buddy rare so it's a size 3 monster it's destruction deity the old world as the hacker 10,000 attack 10,000 defense and two crit those are beautiful stats you can only call it if you have a dragon's eye flag it costs 3 gauge and put a card from your field into the drop zone to call it and when it enters the field destroy a monster on your opponent's field and when it attacks if you have 6 or more different world names on cards in your drop zone for this turn it gains triple attack now it is lifelink 2 but I think the offset of that for gaining triple attack is worth it <laughs> um, it shouldn't be too difficult with this deck to get the 6 different worlds it'll, it will take a little bit of time just to get the different drops um, to get the different monsters to drop in but it will not be difficult to achieve that with this deck so you get 4 normal ones and then 1 in the buddy rare foiling which is cool so onto the actual card so all of these are dragons are from all the different worlds this one is the lord of purgatory demise last emperor um, and when he's destroyed call it to one monster from your drop zone by paying its call cost with double attack we have demise star dragon big crunch you have to have a azzy de hacken uh, on the field already reduce the size of this card on the field by three so it costs two to play but it gains you an extra card on the field which obviously is more difficult to do with powerful things because of it being a size three and zero is tending to be a little bit weak or just utility Retainer of the Demonic Dragon as an ah, Zenitra. Zenitra? We'll go with that, sure. It's size 2 from Legend World, and if you have a Dragon's Y flag, it gains double attack. So you're seeing a couple of cards in here that focus on having this Dragon's Y car, uh, flag. So it's quite cool to see. I'm not sure how entirely I feel about it because obviously it was it did feel special and quite unique previously and now it's becoming more of an accessible thing so I suppose yeah, there's always that side of it. Here the retainer of the demonic dragon Simblade Dragon from Dragon World. Dragon, Dragon, Dragon. When it enters the field of your flag is Dragon's Y, you put the top card of your deck into this card's soul, which is useful because it has a soul guard. And if it's attacked for this turn, nullify the attacking cards. Penetrate. Oh sorry, when it's attacked, sorry, when it's attacked. Because it is of course a soul guard. Here we have Magic World being represented with the retainer of the Dwanic Dragon, Ahat Nahat. That's kind of a cool name. Only 4,000 attack and 4,000 defense with 2 crit on a size 2. Uh, when it enters the field, though, you can pay 2 life to search your deck for up to 1 destruction deity, the old world as you to hack her from the deck, put it your hand. And during your turn, when this card is put to the drop zone, you can pay a life to destroy a size 2 or less monster on your opponent's field. So it's a cool tutor for getting your big main hitter out of the deck. And also when your opponent does eventually decide to deal with it, boom, they're going to be um, losing their size 2 or less monsters. And you get four of that guy in there. Which is useful because you really do want Azzy to hack her out and play. Magic World again with Einst as another retainer. Uh, 4,000 attack and defense, 2 crit on a size 2. And when he enters the field, if there are no other monsters on your field, you can call the size 1 or less monster with wizard or dragon in its attribute from your drop zone by paying its call cost. Um, so as you saw, just a little bit of recursion there. Here we have Hero World being represented. Sorry. Hero World being represented with the retainer of the demonic dragon, Masked Dragon. Size 2, 4,000 attack and defense with 2 crit. He has counteract during your opponent's turn. You can pay a gauge to call this card from your hand. And it has move. So a little bit of uh, utility on there. Just gives you options, doesn't it? Another retainer for Dragon World, the Fallen Wing Dragon. Again, 4,000 attack, but 3,000 defense this time with two crit. Uh, one of the coolest bits of artwork, in my opinion, in the deck as well. Uh, it costs a gauge and put the top card of your deck into this card's soul. I always like it when call cards have like positives, basically. Which is useful as well because you have Soul Guard. If you have three or less non monster cards in the drop zone, this card gets power plus 2000, defense plus 2000, and move. And if I quickly flick through the back of this deck, you'll see that is not a problem. Um, and when it is put to the drop zone from the field, you gain one life. A little bit of life gain. Oh, I mean, you only get two of them in there. You probably, ideally, I mean, personally, I'd want another two in there as well, but so many upsides to him. 
Ice Dragon Emperor Glaces. So this is um, not a retainer. <laughs> it is Ancient World. Uh, 3,000 attack, 4,000 defense with 3 crits. So you know this needs to be uh, punching your opponent. And he has the Freezing Bullet. So during an attack on your opponent's turn, if you have a side stream monster on your field, <clears throat> as you do hacker, you may discard this card from your hand and pay a life to gnaw the attack. So he's acting as a shield. And he has life link 1. Um, I'm going to reference something in a minute, so we'll keep going through first. Though. So here we have Hadron. This is back to the retainers now, so this is Star Dragon World being represented. It's only a size 1, but when he enters the field, if your flag is Dragon's Wire, you may discard a card from your hand, put the top card of your deck into your gauge, and draw a card. You start to see these spell effects appearing now, aren't we? Another retainer, this one is um, Giriel Cow. I'm going to go with that. 4,000 attack, 1,000 defense, 2 crit, and representing Danger World. When you enter the field, put the top card of your deck into your gauge, and if you have 5 or less life, put the top card of your deck into your gauge. So, generate 1 gauge, or generate 2 gauge. Then, you get 3 of those. We have another retainer. This is the Resurrected Dragon Bones, which is fitting for Katana World. 3,000 attack, only 1,000 defense, with 2 crit. When you enter the field, put the top two cards of your deck into your drop zone, self mill, which is a bit weird. But act is to pay a gauge to put a side stream monster from your drop zone into your hand. Ah, there we go. <laughs> so, not only do you have a guy who can tutor Azzy the Hacker out of the deck for you, you've also got the potential to be able to get it back from your drop zone here. Uh, here we have uh, Geodol. So, this is the Dungeon World representative. 2,000 attack, 1,000 defense with 2 crit, and when it, ends, when it is put to your drop zone from the field or, or hand, put the top 2 cards of your deck into your drop zone, and put the top card of your deck into your gauge. More of a downside on that one with self-milling, but you do get a gauge out of it as well. You have 4 of those in there. Back to Katana World here, with another retainer, this one's Arakazi. 3,000 attack, 1,000 defense, 1 crit. And monsters with Azida Hacker and its card name on your field get critical plus one because you know he needed more help and more, you know, to be beefier and more of a threat. <laughs> Here we have Vong, retainer of the Dubonic Dragon. So this is for Darkness Dragon World's representation. Size zero, 3000 attack, 1000 defense, and crit one. And act. So if you have a size three or more dragon attribute monster, you can discard this card and pay a life to choose a monster from your field and for this turn the next time it would be destroyed or returned it remains on the field instead it's basically acting like a shield isn't it then we have um, Cursed Dragon Jr who's probably one of the cutest artworks because it's a tiny little baby dragon trying to be evil and menacing <laughs> 2000 attack, one, 2000 defense, 1 crit size 0 act if you're being attacked and you have the dragon's wife flag discard this card from hand to null the attack no other conditions, I like that. It's not like, you know, as long as you don't have something in the center or something like that. And you get three of those. And then lastly, from Star Dragon World, we have the Retainer of the Demonic Dragon Varian. 2,000 attack, 1,000 defense, 1 crit, size 0. And when you have an Azida Hacker, uh, when Azida Hacker enters the field, draw a card. So you have to play him down before you play him, but you get a little bit of card draw. So, to note, there are no spells or items in that deck at all. It is pure monsters, purely dragons. Um, what I was going to reference is that there are um, things like Yu-Gi-Oh! where you've got the Super Heavy Samurai, which is one of the few things I know, who are another sort of set of, um, set of cards that don't have spells, etc. And then the cards themselves, the actual monsters themselves, are the utility spells. So, that one's a really, that one of all three decks, this is the one I want to play the most. Because it looks like it'll be the most fun. A lot of it revolves around getting Azida Hacker out. Um, which is, you know, it's not a bad thing. Uh, but a lot of the deck revolves around getting Azida Hacker out. Because um, he's your main win condition. And then everything else is sort of like just supporting and making sure you achieve that goal. So yeah, so there we go. That is all three decks from the champion box so as I just said the one that I most like is the dragon's wire especially because it's finally getting access to it now like I said it's a shame for anyone who did you know, buy into the promos and stuff like that but you've still got the coolest version of the card let's be honest here um, <laughs> um, 
I mean, the hero one is interesting. It's the kind of deck that I would make if I was making a new deck, just because it's pure impact monsters. And that sort of like um, themed approach to a deck is the kind of theming I like to I like to deck build around. And then the Dragon World one, which to me personally is probably the most boring one, um, but it also seems to be one of the most efficient with so much synergy between the cards. So yeah, there, there we go. That is all three of the decks you get in here. I think this is a fantastic box set. Definitely worth getting a hold of one. Not only because you can use it as storage, but also just because the three decks are really cool all together. Um, however, there are some cards in there you'll probably want to switch out and get some duplicates of. Which, to make a note of, um, all the cards you've seen here today can be bought and sold on our website individually on bigorbitcards.co.uk. So go and check the website out if you're after any more of these cards individually just to beef up your own versions of your decks. Other than that, remember to like and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. And otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye.